guys, hope you're doing well. Usually I tend to make really long videos and I do understand that not everybody wants to sit and watch them. So I figured I'd make this one a lot shorter but make it straight to the point. Over the years I've seen a lot of talk about the tuning of the Nasher. People saying they want this, they want that. And I understand that everyone has their own opinions as to what would make the best gears experience. But I like to try and explain my reasoning so this is what this video is going to be. I've seen a lot of talk about the Nasher over the years and I do feel like a lot of people don't really understand the weapon. I don't mean this in a rude way, I really really don't. But I feel like perhaps people have a preference but don't necessarily know the correct terminology to explain their thoughts. Gears is built in the Unreal Engine. Size and distance is measured in Unreal Units or UU for short. For the sake of keeping this video simple though, let's just imagine that the sections on the floor in all the examples only represent one step forward or back rather than actual UU values. A big example of this is when people say they don't like getting 99% in one hit. I understand that. But they ask for the gib range to be increased or different things like that. But let's take a look at the gib range and let's explain how those changes would actually impact the playstyle. Looking at this example, let's imagine that the red section of the floor is the earliest opportunity that the attacker can get a gib. They walk up to the target and blow them into chunks. That's a gib. But what would happen if you increase the gib range? What would that do? Well, as players, we're naturally going to do our best to keep ourselves as safe as possible. This means we're not likely to get closer than what we need to. Increasing the gib range is only going to have people playing at further distances whilst doing their best to stay just one step outside of gib range for safety. This part is something I do understand latency has a huge impact on. However, if we're just looking at the cheering aspect of it, we can't really factor latency in here. At full game pace, I do understand how frustrating it is to feel like you shoot somebody only for them to survive and blow you away with their next shot. Usually you'll find yourself getting 99% from this just to make it even more frustrating. What's often happening here is as I've just explained, you're both trying to keep out of gib range by the smallest of differences, only stepping closer to take your shot. As you're both strafing, the gib range between you is moving with you. The bigger the gib range, the harder it can be to properly judge where the limits of it are. But if you're both right on the edge and your opponent takes one small step closer to take their shot, you lose. So just quickly going back to look at the example of increasing the gib range. You can increase the gib range by 50% of the map and it still won't stop you getting 99% in one hit. This is because players will be staying as far away as they can and would always be trying to keep one step outside of the gib range, no matter how big you make it. For this reason, I feel like having a smaller gib range is better for making it easier to judge at full game pace, just so you can see how close you need to be. This is where I'm going to put my opinion in. Playing Gears 5, I often feel like I'm forced to hold my shot in situations where I know it's a bad thing to do. Looking at this example, let's imagine the red floor is a gib range, the orange floor is where you can deal significant damage, and the green floor is being far enough away that you'll do almost no damage if you fire. I feel like more often than not, I know that I'm going into a situation and I know I'm going to lose because I can just feel that the game isn't going to reward me for trying to prevent the opponent getting close to me. If I fire while the opponent is in the green zone, I will do almost no damage. But I know that if I let the opponent enter the orange zone before I fire, then I won't do enough damage to get the kill. But they'll be able to run at me before I can fire again. For this reason, I find myself instinctively firing when the opponent is in the green zone, and again when they are in the orange zone. Both of those shots aren't going to do enough damage to down the opponent. I feel like this is why it feels like players can often run head down at you and win. The example you can see now is just a visual representation. I'm not suggesting making a Nasher a fast firing weapon. I'm trying to demonstrate that one player should have the viability to confidently two shot down an opponent. This example is showing that two shots in the orange zone will down an opponent before they can enter gib range. I feel like this will prevent players feeling like they have to fire too soon just to inflict a bit of damage and will also prevent players feeling like they're shooting at somebody very close but can't down them in time. I think that to resolve this would take quite a bit of tweaking. I think that this would need to be tested and balanced alongside movement speeds. Rather than focusing on gib range, I think the focus should become the two shot down range and see that enough damage can be dealt to inflict the full 600 points of damage in the two shot down range. I don't know enough about the actual damage values of pellets and the different ranges to even begin making a suggestion for this, 
but I think this will be a solid place for the developers to spend some time testing and perfecting. Whilst I understand that I've just spent some time talking about a two-shot down becoming more viable for a single player to have faith in, I do also think that a huge difference will be made by reintroducing the one-shot down that we used to see on older titles. I understand that in the past this was quite frustrating, but look at it this way. I've just showed how a player can run up to you only to have you fire then they give you by taking one more step. Would it not be more rewarding to the player who fired first to get the kill? I believe this would completely remove the 99% in one hit. I think this should only be possible if a player is one step outside of Gib range and lands a full pellet spread on the opponent. This will reward them with a down. In a one-on-one -on -one situation this would of course result in a win, however in a 1v2 situation downing one of the opponents means that they still have to be considered as part of the fight as they could be revived or taken as a meat shield or whatever happens in the battle. I think it adds so much more variety to Nash a play again rather than just having simply it's a kill or it's not a kill. Players would have to think about timing their shots and their positioning before they do so. This part is moving away from distances and is looking at how the Nasher fires. Throughout previous Gears titles, aiming would cause the spread to be pulled tighter whereas blind firing would cause a much wider pellet spread. I'll leave this a play through now so you can see what I mean. I can't sleep, yeah. Only miss you when I'm breathing In too deep, yeah. Am I just your little secret? I'm not trying to claim that this is vital to Gears, I feel as though it's completely removed any reason for pop shotting. In the past, pop shotting was used during a battle to quickly earn a tighter pellet spread. I like this because it actually gave players a reason to aim without walking around fully aimed down sights the entire time. I do miss this being a factor in Gears. Again, it feels like another element of Nash a play that has been removed, resulting in players seeming to play the same way. I miss the variety. The last point I want to make in relation to pellet spreads is how many people claim Gears 4 and 5 are much easier than older games. Whilst there's many mechanics that could be discussed to cover that, I want to keep this video only to the Nasher. I want to look at the blind fired pellet spreads in Gears 1, 2 and 3 compared to 5. I believe that it's much easier to land a full spread on Gears 5 due to how compact the shot is when blind fired. I feel that having such a compact shot makes it easier for people to deal heavy damage with a blind fire when in an older game they might perhaps not have that level of accuracy to hit the full shot without aiming for it. I would like to see a return to blind fired shots being less compact and people having to put a bit more effort into landing a full spread. <laughs> 